out right now. Right here, we're just gonna go. Oh darn! That's one. Hold it way up. That's it. Perfect. Uh, yeah. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Better Odds Fishing. Today, we're gonna be talking about crab snaring, and I'm gonna go over and highlight some of the basics and the necessities you need to get out here, get yourself some Dungeons Crab while crab snaring. So as far as rod and reel setups go, this is what I recommend. So I would suggest getting yourself 12 foot rod. This one here is the 12 foot Ocean Master Surf and Spinning. Works great. It'll handle any weight out uh, snare you want to use. Uh, it says rate right up to 10, but I I've thrown 18 on it and it it's done just fine. Um, 12 would be the preference, although you could get away with, I got one out here that's a 10 foot Ocean Master. So the, the 10 will do, it's just not going to cast as far. If you're using a lighter snare, it's going to work. I, it's something I usually use for um, inside the bay, that 10 footer, but it works fine out here crab snaring. As far as the, the reel goes, um, this one's got an expensive bait runner. It's the Thunnest 12,000, spooled with uh, 80 pound braid. Um, you could obviously get away with the cheaper reels. This is the, the, the cheapest quality reel that I could find. This is the uh, Ocean Offshore Angler uh, Tightline 8000. Got it spooled with 80 pound Power Pro as well. So obviously the 80 pound Power Pro is my bread and butter. But uh, again, if you're, you're throwing lighter snares, you're uh, going out to the pier and uh, you don't need to cast as far, uh, 25 mono would actually be my preference at that point. So that 25 mono is much easier on your finger. So when you're casting, uh, when you're casting heavy snares, when you add weight to it, it gets uh, taxing on your finger. Uh, some people recommend there's this thing called the breakaway cannon. You'd add that to your rod; it'll help cast that way. Um, other suggestions are uh, tape. They got tape for your finger. You can tape your finger up. You wear a, a leather glove or anything leather covering your index finger is going to help. And then I guess the the last alternative uh, to help your finger stay fit and not get hurt is uh, you can always go with a casting reel. So casting reels will work just fine but uh, they do have the disadvantages. So it's better for your finger but uh, sometimes trouble someone casting you may not get as much distance or if you do get the distance you may uh, risk running uh, into a backlash which then you could break off your snare, lose the snare, tangle your lineup and have to deal with all of that. So uh, that's why I'm going with spinning for uh, crabbing from the surf. It just gives me that casting distance and uh, I can kind of deal with what's going on with the whole finger situation. I generally use a snap at the end of my line. That's just easier connection to the snare itself. That way you could, when rebaiting, you don't have to retie anything. And then it also gives another point of swivel. So you're less likely to break off that snare when casting. So I'm out here today at Ocean Beach in San Francisco. It's uh, one of the good beaches for crab snaring. Uh, it's got plenty of room. Uh, it's about uh, three parking lots and plenty of street parking. So very accessible, very easy to get yourself out here and find a spot. Another one of the local favorites is Baker Beach. That's further north. It's closer to the Golden Gate. So I don't know if you guys have known this, but uh, the Golden Gate is the threshold. So anywhere on the inside of that, you cannot legally keep any Dungeness crab. So Baker Beach, as close as you can get to uh, where they're all coming to spawn. So that should be the highest concentration of crab. Uh, it's usually fairly crowded. So if you're gonna go there, you wanna get out there early. One of the other spots I wanna talk about is Pacifica Pier. Uh, put out a video there. It's a good spot for beginners, uh, easy spot for the crab. It is fairly crowded most of the season. So I wanna go through and give a list of things that I brought with me today. I'd say the most important uh, luxury item I got here is this crab cart picked out up from Bass Pro Shops. It's very nice, makes it a lot easier when trying to bring down everything to the beach. Um, works well on the pier. So I got that. Uh, that's allowing me to bring about a couple of buckets. So one of the buckets I'm gonna be using to keep the crab in. I have uh, another bucket I can use to grab water. Usually it's easiest to have two of those so you can fill one up with the water and uh, not get all that sand in there. Brought myself an ice chest. That's where I'm gonna keep the crab once I catch them bait cooler so I don't have to bring the bait inside of the cooler with the rest of the drinks. Keep this one clean. This one's always dirty. This is just my camera bag so I don't have to talk about that. But, uh, you're going to need yourself a nice fixed blade knife. Use that for um, 
cutting up bait, uh, pliers, obviously. So sand spike's great. You can uh, position your rod wherever you need to. Inside my tackle box right here, um, I brought myself uh, Ziploc bags, easy way to keep the meat once it's all been processed. Exam gloves, uh, obviously you want these when you're handling the bait. Uh, squid, anchovies, all that uh, oils you use. They, uh, you don't really want that under your fingernails. You can get infections and whatnot. Obviously, you're gonna wanna bring yourself a crab gauge. That way you can measure the crab. You need the one that measures uh, five and three quarters for Dungeness crab and uh, four inches if you wanna keep red rock crab. Other than that, I'm bringing weights. I got weights to add to snares. I got my snares themselves. Uh, good snare to use. Crab Slayer to come in various sizes. I recommend uh, eight or 10 ounces. That's gonna be the best through most of the conditions. So these are the snares that I'm using. They're uh, Ken Crab Slayers. They're 10 ounces. Um, like I said, 10 ounces sticks pretty well. Um, <clears throat> for maintenance, I normally, uh, when I'm done, pull all the loops up just like this and then attach the um, leader line, wrap it around it. That way the loops stay nice and don't get creased or coiled or kinked up. I recommend just, you know, keeping them nice like this, wash them off, rinse them off every time you use them and they'll, they'll stay healthy for a little bit. So I'll normally set my snares up like this, get it all tied up on the line, ready to go. That way I can bait them all up at once, use one pair of gloves, get them all ready to go all at the same time. So I normally bring myself a selection of bait. You never know what they're gonna want that day. So uh, usually the staples are fish or squid. So right now I got myself, uh, this is a mixture of herring and anchovies. I got it marinated in some Procure. Um, that, that's probably my number one go-to bait today. I'm gonna try that and also add some squid into it. So you wanna make sure you pack those cages really tight. Uh, get them almost bursting at the seams with bait. Let's go ahead and close that bad boy up. <sighs> We want it to look uh, something like this when it's done. So really full. So now that I got the cages all baited up, I'm gonna go ahead and send them out. Let's see how we do. Yeah, that thing's a monster. Oh my god. Dude, he's on all of my snares. Literally every <laughs> single snare. Every loop got him. He ain't getting away. Oh shit. Come on, man. Let me get you a photo really quick. <laughs> Alright, now that we're back, we'll go ahead and check the other two rods. Uh, best case scenario, there's going to be a crab there. If not, let's go ahead, reel it in, cast it back out. So reel it slack. It's up the hook. Feels fairly light. So I don't think we got some on. This feels good already. Heavy. May not be a crab. Feels kind of like a crab. Getting tired. Must be a crab. There we go. Yeah, crab on. Yeah, buddy. That looks like a keeper. Nice. Oh yeah. It's a male. As you can see from this going straight up, nice and thin. Let's have a check his length, but he looks like a keeper to me. 
just from first glance. I mean, it looks like it. Hopefully. For the longest time, it almost felt like it had nothing on. It's like there's a little bit of weight, but I don't know. That's definitely, that's like six and a quarter. Right? Yeah, it's over six. Yeah, buddy. So like I said, in the perfect world, everything goes right, you get the crab. So one thing that I didn't mention earlier that I definitely think is a necessity is gonna be these tall rubber boots. Uh, these ones are for hunting. Uh, these are for waterfowl. I think that's what Scotty's got on himself. But uh, a great alternative to waders. It's a much cheaper solution. Uh, it'll keep you dry because you don't have to be going way out there and soaking into the water to cast things out. So just, just to help you cast. Uh, these are easier to maintain, easy to wash off, easy to keep clean. So that's what I would recommend. Uh, tall rubber boots. So one thing that's not required but I definitely recommend would be to grab yourself some uh, heavy lines. This is a 130 pound mono. I got some sleeves in there and some crimpers. That way, if any of my loops do break or get worn out, I can replace them right here on the spot and the uh, snare will be right back in action. And then I also bring additional three sixes and eight ounce pyramid weights that I can attach onto the back end of the snare. Cause you never want to be underprepared for a big current. Uh, if you do hit the big current, obviously your uh, success rate is going to go down. But if you come prepared and you bring the extra weight, uh, sometimes I've thrown 16, 18 ounces total on a snare, uh, you'll still be able to get it done. Uh, it won't waste your trip. You won't have to turn around and go home. Because if, if when you cast, you cast it out there and within a minute or two, your line's going way down the beach in either direction, it's not going to be fishable. You're not going to be able to get crab. You're not going to have enough time for the bait to soak before it's washing up on shore or tangling with all the other anglers' lines. So uh, that's what I got for you. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully this gets you on some crab. Um, hope you all enjoyed the episode. Uh, feel free to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you all next time. And uh, most important supply you don't want to forget when going out crabbing is a nice frosty one. So. Current's picking up or I got another crab on. This line's moved just a little bit. Go ahead and check it out right now. Doesn't feel all too heavy, but I'll keep the pressure on just in case we do have something on there. All right, now that feels heavy. <laughs> I think so. It's almost to the beach. Oh my God. I think that's another keeper. Come on, come on. Yeah, buddy. Oh, that's a big boy. <laughs> oh, thank you, Scott. Holy crap. That's a, oh, my God. That's, that's a trip, now, that's a crab, bro. Holy Sheesh. Damn, that's, that's at least seven and that's a half. That's a massive crab. Thank Good you, sir. Lord. Yeah. Dinner is served. I saw him and I was like, oh, you're not getting away. <laughs> Hold him up on his belly. Oh, yeah, that's a monster. Oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah buddy. Serious? That's what What's okay. the point of the gauge on this one? Yeah, <laughs> and you got a ruler? You're going to have to bring yeah, it Yeah, because this thing ain't going to do nothing. Right here, I we're just going to go. Here, oh, darn. What's that one today? Hey, Fernando, heads up. It's over seven. Oh, for sure. Nice one. Yeah. Is this what you guys usually fish for? Uh, oh, yeah. for the next couple of weeks, yeah. You fish for crab? Yes, Rods sir. And reels. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm from Florida, sorry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was curious what, I was going to come down and say, what is it you guys fish for? I was like, crabs, really? Oh, yeah. Hey, can yeah. I get a picture? Sure.
That's really cool. <laughs> hold it, hold it up high so it's silhouetted against us. Well, that's that's one. Hold it way up. That's a perfect. Wicked cool, dude. Thank you, sir. And which one is that? Uh, it's a Dungeness crab. It is Dungeness. We've mm -hmm. actually been to Dungeness. In, in Pro tip here: if you sell some rubber bands, throw them on their claws, they won't rip themselves up while they're in the bucket. It's a good setup. My crab is little brother to yours. Oh, they look happy. Oh yeah. Feels really good, man. Oh yeah, that's a crab. Crab on, baby. They got me another jumbo. I can see him on the top of the waves. Don't lose him. There we go. That's what's up. Yeah, buddy. Another big boy.